random variables can be described via their probability distribution. And indeed, if you have several random variables or multiple random variables, you could describe it in terms of joint probability distributions. So you may wonder, can we actually do something similar to a stochastic process? Can we describe the probability, um, uh, all probabilities of a, a stochastic process uh, or the probability distribution of a, pro a stochastic process? It turns out we can do so, but a full description actually requires to specify all nth order joint probability distributions of samples. And here n could be any, any positive integer. So that actually means that we need to describe the, the uh, probability mass functions for x of t for all t. So for any value t, for any time value, we will need to have access to the probability mass function of, uh, of samples of the uh, stochastic process. We would also need all joint, uh, joint probability mass functions. So for any time t1 and any time t2, we need the joint probability mass function here. So and we need to be, be able to do that for all t1 and t2s. And actually, we need, we need it for n equal 3, 4, 5, and so on. For any n, we would need to specify the whole joint probability mass function in this form. And we would need to do that for all time, all combinations of n times f for all x's. And that's hard to do. It's a lot of work, and it's not always possible. In some cases, though, in very few cases, it can be done. One of such cases is the uh, IID process that we have looked at before. So to exemplify what, what it means to make a full description of a, a stochastic process, we'll try with the IID process. And uh, we are looking at an IID process uh, XK, a discrete time process and uh, this is a discrete time process where each sample has the same uh, probability mass function here fx and all samples are independently identically distributed and we can write up now the joint probability mass functions of n samples so that would be the probability that x k1 is less than, say, x1, less than or equal to, x k2, less than or equal to, say, x2, etc., up to x kn, less than or equal to little xn. So, can be a bit difficult to see the differences between uh, random variables with capital letters and the uh, small uh, variables or the small uh, parameters for the uh, for the probability mass functions with lowercase letters. We know that it's IID, which means that they are, they are independent, which means that this gigantic uh, PMF actually can be factorized, so we can make a product n equal to 1 up to capital N. And for each of these n's here, we would need a PMF xk1 uh, xkn, sorry, less than xn, less than or equal to xn. And we take the product of all n of these. That, is, that was actually by independence. So, independence, independence, we could factorize. Now we need to use, or we can also use that they are identically distributed. And this simply means that we realize that what we have here is nothing but fx. So, in fact, we have all specified 
So that is, and then we need to use the little variable here, xn. So for every lowercase n, we get one such new factor, but it's not a problem. We know the factor. Uh, fx. And in, in that sense, actually, we have specified for arbitrary capital in and for arbitrary x, we have now specified the joint probability mass functions of n samples. It's an extremely rare situation that you can actually uh, do such a thing. And what we, um, what we exploited here was that they were independent and identically distributed. In general, we would have to give up, uh, give up all hopes on actually achieving a full description. It's far too much work to specify all of these PMF, it's a, if it is at all possible. So in most cases, actually, we settle for something less. We settle for a partial description, not a full description, but a partial description of a stochastic process. That means to describe the mean, the variance, and the covariance function. So the mean would be defined like, so that's the notation mu x of t is a function of time, which is to take the expectation of the process at any time. So for every time step, we take a um, we take the expectation of the process, and that gives us a function, a deterministic function mu x of t. So you could try to describe the process by the mean. Um, that would be a part of a, a, a description. It's not a full description, it's only a part, uh, partial description. Could also try to compute a variance. So we would typically denote that by sigma square. This is also going to be time dependent uh, you could define that here, taking the variance at of the variable x of t for all t's. And if you want, you can also write this as an expectation. You can write it out, x of t minus its mean of t and then you need to square it. So the interpretation of the variance here is that how much does x actually deviate from its mean? This is what's written here, and then we square it here. The mean and the variance are quite nice to have and easy to interpret, but they don't tell us much about how the process behaves. It's only computed based on a single sample in time. So to describe something about the time evolution, we need a more complex uh, entity called the covariance function. So it's denoted by Cx for the process x, and we give it two time indices. We want to say something about what is the relation or the correlation between, between the process sample at two different points in time. And I'll just write up the definition here at first. This is the expectation of x at time 1 minus the mean of x at time 1 and then we take the product with the same process x but now at time 2 so that's another random variable than this one here minus the mean also at time 2 oh, and I need a bracket and I need an end bracket for this one here so a lot of parentheses and brackets here. Another way to write this is in fact to use the covariance operator. So you can say this is a covariance between x taken at time 1 and x sampled at time 2. One way to interpret the covariance function is to look at the bunch of samples or realizations of a stochastic process. So that would be x of t. That would be one realization. 
and another realization and you can draw many more. Here we have time one and here we have time two. This would be the random the realizations of the random var variable x of t1 and here would be the realization of the random variable if you cut down all the realization of the stochastic process x of t2. So what we actually measure here is the correlation between these two, these two functions here uh, or these two random variables sampled at different times. So do they often tend to be above the mean or below the mean at the same time then we get a high covariance but if they tend to re repel each other so if this one goes up and the other one goes down we get a negative covariance and if they move somehow in an uncorrelated fashion or move independently the covariance will be zero so now we are ready to give an example of a first and second order characterization of a stochastic process we are going to do only an iid process um, and actually we're going to look at the process XK IID Gaussian or normal distributed with zero mean and variance one. The mean function for such a process because it is a discrete time process we have a mu X of K that's our time variable this is the expectation of xk for all k's. And if we look in the definition, we can see that this is xk is a normal distributed random variable with zero mean. So this here is zero for all k. So in this case, mu x is not really a function of time, but only constant and it's zero in this case. We can also compute the covariance function. So this is C x at time t1 or time k and time l. You can write it like this. And this is now the expectation of x k minus mu. Let me just write mu k for mu x k. So times xk xl sorry minus mu l and now there are two cases we need to consider one is if k is equal to l and another one is if k is not l so we can write like this in the case where k is equal to l then this one here becomes xk minus mu k to the square which is equal to the variance and if we look up here the variance is 1 so that was if k was equal to l oops l but what if k is not l well, in this case, x, k, and x, l are different random variables. And because it's an IID process, those random variables are also independent. This means that this random variable here is independent of this random variable here. And this implies that the expectation can be split into a product. So the expectation factorizes like so. So that was the first one, xk times xl minus mu l. And if you look for a moment at this, you can see because the expectation is linear, the expectation of mu is just mu, the expectation of x, x is also mu. You see this one here is zero. And in fact, all, also this one here is zero, so all of this is zero. And this is when k is not L. So this was our first example of a first and second order characterization here of an IID process.